So maybe this is you. You're playing guitar, you're enjoying yourself, you want to keep going, but you can't because your fingertips are killing you. They're red, they're peeling, they might even blister soon. You just can't go on. It's too distracting. Well, this is good. I guarantee you, once your fingers get sore and played enough that the skin starts to peel, that means you're shedding your weak skin and growing stronger skin. And the next time you play, you're gonna be able to go twice as long without having the pain, or at least longer than you did the first time. The other thing is if you stop playing for a week, two weeks, three weeks, your skin's gonna soften up again and you have to start over again. This has happened to me throughout my life. Here's the rule of thumb with finger pain. The more you play, the harder your fingers get, the less it hurts. The less you play, the softer your fingers are, the more it hurts. So the solution to finger pain is play more. No pain, no gain. But the pain might also mean you're not playing the right way. You're pressing down too hard. You're not pressing on the right part of the fret. It might also mean there's something wrong with your guitar. And there's also some ways to keep on playing without any pain. So in this lesson, we're gonna talk about how to manage the pain, how to listen to the pain to know if you're doing something wrong or there's something wrong with your instrument and how to avoid the pain when you wanna keep playing but you just can't deal with that pain anymore. But before we get into all this, please go ahead and click the subscribe button so that you get all of the latest and greatest content from Guitar Tricks. All right, so first let's talk about embracing the pain. So what's great about finger pain is that it means that your fingertips are going to harden up. Now imagine that you were trying to jog with pillows on your feet. You wouldn't have much traction, right? It would really slow you down. Well, your fingertips are like little pillows. So when you're trying to press down those strings, you've got to get through all that cushion to press it down, right? Now when your fingertips are very hard, it's much easier to press down the note. It'll go down quicker. So that's one advantage. Having that hard fingertip is going to press down that note quicker, and the harder the tip is, the less you'll feel it. So it's almost like having shoes on your fingers. It makes you more agile on the fretboard. Now having those hard fingertips is especially useful with hammer-ons, because now you have this hard surface to your finger, like a hammer. It'll help you get a solid hammer sound. And also with bends, Because with bends, you're literally using that skin to push up that string farther than it wants to go. And that really puts a lot of stress on the skin. So having that resistance is helpful. And bending is also the most surefire way to strengthen your fingertips. So let's talk about what's gonna work your fingertips the most and the least. So the most is going to be a guitar like this, a steel string, acoustic guitar, with strings made out of steel that are generally harder. So these acoustic guitars have steel strings, whereas an electric guitar like this one has nickel alloy strings. They're not as dense and the string tension is not as great. So they're easier to press down and easier on your fingers. So what that means is if you want to strengthen your fingers, play acoustic guitar with steel strings. And if you want to give your fingers a break, switch over to the electric, right? Now, one of the easiest ways to deal with finger pain is to get lighter string gauges. So most acoustic guitars, the standard is gauge 12. That's the thickness of the string to say 56 or around there. You can go all the way down to tens or nines, referring to the, the thickness of the high E string, and that's gonna make life much easier. Another thing you can do is tune your guitar down a half step by just tuning, if it's E, A, D, G, B, E, go E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat. So tune everything down a half step, and then you can also put a capo on the first fret. So now your second fret becomes your first fret. This will make the strings sound the same way that they did before you tune down. And this is the same thing as buying a short scale instrument. So scale length is the distance between the nut and the bridge. And the longer the scale length, the more tension on the strings, the harder they are on your fingers. And also the more you have to stretch. So if you do tune down your guitar a half step and put a capo on the first fret, you've just taken off about an inch and a half from your total scale length 
effectively giving yourself a short scale instrument. All right, so now I've tuned to E flat. So if you play a G along with me, it'll sound very different. But now I'm gonna put this capo on the first fret. And now it sounds just like a regular guitar without a capo, but the whole scale length just shrunk by an inch and a half and the string tension is much less. Now, another thing that's going to really work your fingertips, which is not a good thing, is very high action. This guitar actually has higher action than I would like. That means the distance of the strings from your fretboard. So if you have really high action on a steel string guitar and you're just starting out, it is totally understandable if you start to get discouraged by how hard it is to play. And I don't blame you. If you're learning on a steel string acoustic guitar with really high strings, it's going to hurt a lot, for months probably. So what I would suggest you do is bring that guitar to a shop, have the action lowered nice and low, and this will make it twice as easy to press the strings down. Obviously, this is more noticeable as you come up the fretboard because the higher you get, the higher the action tends to get. Now, another thing that's gonna put undue stress on your fingertips is pressing too hard and not pressing in the right place. So with chords and with single notes, you always wanna aim to get the tip of your finger as close to the fret as possible. So as an example, here on a D chord, if you can see, I have all three fingers right behind the fret wire. So not on top, but just behind. Now the law of physics states, I'm not a physicist, but I can tell just by going like this. If I put the minimal amount of pressure to get that note to ring out, and I maintain that pressure and back up the fret, see what happens? Back here in the fret, I've got to press twice as hard. So pressing right behind the fret is about twice as easy as going in the back of the fret. You have to press much harder. So what I suggest you do when you're practicing is just be very mindful with your chord shapes of how close your fingers are to the fret wire. This is a little harder on chords than it is on single notes. With single notes, it's very easy to control where your fingers go. On a chord, being it's a contortion of the entire hand, it, it's gonna be a little more difficult to get all the fingers at the same time to be right behind the fret. So some chords you can do it easily, some you won't. For instance, on an A chord, there's just no way getting around it. Being it's all these fingers cramped in, one of the fingers is gonna have to go deeper behind the fret wire than the others. So, you know, that's, out of all the chords, that one's gonna be the hardest to get the fingers all close to the fret wire. And then if you have smaller hands, like on a C, I have no problem getting them all behind the fret wire. If you have small hands, it might be a little more difficult, but it's something that you wanna be aware of and work toward. So here's a great exercise to train yourself to not put more pressure on the string than you need to. Take any note, and you wanna do this with each finger, so each finger gets used to it. Let's say it's a C chord that you're working on. Take this third fret of the A string, Put that third finger down. Play that note and gradually release the pressure until the note starts to buzz and you don't hear it anymore. And then once you find that spot, go back and forth. Try to get a feel for how soft you're pressing. It's pretty soft don't have to press that hard. So you're training yourself to kind of feel how hard you need to press. Now I'm gonna do it with the next note. Gradually releasing. Do it with the next one. Then try the whole chord.
okay? Now, another thing is the harder you strum and the harder you pick, the harder you have to press. So if I press really lightly and I pick really lightly on a note, it's good. Now, if I keep that same pressure but pick harder, you see what happens? I have to press harder. So if you want to press softer, play softer. So you might be playing for a while and your fingers hurt. So what you could do is just play softer. Don't press as hard, don't strum as hard. All right, so now let's talk about how to avoid the pain. Maybe it's discouraging you, you don't wanna play because it hurts, or maybe you wanna keep playing, but you can't because your fingers hurt a lot. So what are some things you could do? Well, one thing to do is have another guitar that causes less pain, such as a nylon string acoustic guitar. Of all the guitars, a nylon string acoustic guitar is the easiest to play. The reason is the strings are made of plastic, they're wider so they won't cut into your fingers, and the tension is very low compared to a steel string acoustic or an electric guitar. So you could get yourself a backup guitar, or if you have a loved one that's trying to play, especially a kid that is discouraged because it's hurting their fingers, start with that. Start with a nylon string acoustic guitar, get used to playing, learn some chords, get comfortable before tackling a more painful instrument like one of these. If you don't wanna play nylon acoustic, switch from your steel string acoustic to your electric. That'll also make life a lot easier. An acoustic guitar is designed to sound good acoustically. So the strings are heavier, they're made to be louder, they're bigger, they're stronger, they're more painful on the fingers. An electric guitar is designed to sound good plugged in. For this reason, it doesn't really matter how wimpy the strings are because we don't need it to be loud on the instrument. We have an amplifier to take care of that. So you can put on your electric guitar strings that are super slinky. You could go as low as seven to like 36, really, really slinky. Those will be almost like there's nothing even on the guitar. So that's always something you can do, switch to a lower string gauge. Now the advantages of having slinky guitar strings, you could bend those strings really easy. Now one thing to keep in mind, if you do switch to lighter gauge strings, you're gonna wanna press much lighter on the strings. Because what happens is if you press too hard, the whole chord will go sharp, or certain notes. There's, the strings are so slinky that you can, you can actually push them in and make them touch the fingerboard and that will make the whole string go sharp. So one way to train yourself to not press so hard is exactly what we talked about earlier. Play a note and see how light you could press before it starts getting muted. So when everything else has failed you, you're, you've tried lighter gauge strings, you've tuned down a half step, you tried a nylon string, you moved to your electric from your acoustic, you might wanna try something like this. These are called Gorilla Tips. And basically what they are is they're just a, a thin plastic uh, sheathing to go over the tips of your fingers. And you can get them custom sized. So I mean, they're small, medium, large, extra large. My finger is a medium. So take a look at my hand. <laughs> Maybe you'll see what yours might be. If you go to the guitar store, you could actually, there's a, a fitter in the package to put your finger in to see what size you are. So the way that this works is you just take the sheathing and stretch it over your fingertip. So the sides of it are very thin, but there's a harder tip and it almost acts like a, like a cushion for your fingertip. So. I purchased these just to show you them. I used them very, I used one of them very briefly before I started filming. Um, obviously I don't have use for these because my fingers are nice and calloused, but I did have a student once that used them and liked them because they totally removed the pain. Now the disadvantages of these are going to be that you're not gonna have that kinesthetic feeling of the guitar that's really important to developing your touch sensitivity. 
because now you're going to have this this uh, this blocking over it. Okay, so I actually just ripped part of them with my fingertip. So you're going to want to be very careful with these, especially if you want them to last. Let's see, I ripped off a little spot first time using them. So be careful. They're about ten ninety nine. So now I've got my plastic fingertips and I'm going to give them a try. I mean, they work good. I could totally see hours of playing with these on with no finger pain. So, I mean, if you know you want to play your guitar and you're going somewhere and you're going to want to play it for hours or days, I could totally see these being very useful. They're not going to work good for like sliding. There's friction when I try to slide. They're not going to work too good for pull-offs. Definitely not pull-offs. Hammer-on's pretty good. But pull-offs feel very weird. So my final verdict on these is only use these if you have to. When the pain becomes unbearable, or if you know you need to play for hours and your fingers are sore, then take these out. So I think for a beginner, these are a good thing to have kind of uh, in a drawer somewhere to use once in a while. But I would say if you try to learn with these things on, it's going to prevent you from uh, really getting a feel for your guitar with the tips of your fingers. That's really something you want to develop, that sense of touch. And it's also going to delay the inevitable. You want to strengthen your fingertips. You want to harden your fingertips. And if you use these, that's just not going to happen. So is it a good product? Definitely. Is it a crutch if you use it more than you need to? Definitely. And sometimes all you need is a short break. Like think about a weightlifter or a runner or a jogger or something. You know, you might feel like you're completely spent, but then you take a little break and you're ready to go back to it. So it's the same with your fingertips. You know, if they're starting to really hurt, take a break for an hour, two hours, three hours, go back to it later in the day and you'll see they started to heal up a little bit and you'll be good to go. Now, another thing you could do, and I heard that Stevie Ray Vaughan used to do this because he used huge heavy strings, high action, and really bent those strings so much, is to use liquid skin. So this is something you can get at CVS or at Walgreens, and basically it's like liquid Band-Aid. You put it over a cut and it heals the cut. So you could apply some of that to your fingertips I've done this once or twice myself, and it'll totally make the pain far less than it would be without it, and will prevent you from doing any more damage to the skin. Obviously, if you're playing heavy, it's gonna start to wear off, but if you're just playing some chords, you should be good for a few hours using that liquid skin. All right, so those are all my tips on toughening up your fingers, embracing the pain, avoiding the pain, the different options you have to lessen the pain, the differences between guitars and all that stuff. So I hope you found that really helpful. If you wanna see more lessons like this, please subscribe to Guitar Tricks. Click that subscribe button below, hit the notification bell if you wanna make sure you know whenever there's a new video that comes out. All right, happy playing, and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.